Welcome to Learn with Saeed. I'm Saeed Mahmood. Today we're talking about IELTS speaking. In the weeks and days before the IELTS speaking test, make sure you take the time to actually practice speaking English with friends and family. This will help you to get rid of the rustiness that one develops over time by not speaking in a certain language over a period of time. This lack of fluency is something that is bound to happen to anyone if you have not practiced speaking English for a while. What happens in that case is you know the words and phrases that you want to use but you cannot string them together while you speak. To help with this issue, you need to practice speaking English as much as you can in the weeks leading to the test. You should also consider recording yourself while you speak. Pick some topics to talk about. I've made a video on the topics that usually get repeated in IELTS. Pick some topics and questions from there. Record yourself on your mobile phone while you answer those questions. When you listen to yourself on the recording, you will be able to identify some of the things that you did wrong. In the initial part of the speaking test, the examiner asks you a few questions about yourself or the things that you know about, things that you're familiar with. For example, about yourself, about your family, about what you do, what you intend to do in the future, things that you like, things that you don't like, and so on. You should try and get used to talking about these things in English. Remember, there are no right or wrong answers in the IELTS speaking test. The examiner will assess you based on how well you can express your opinions and ideas in good English. What is being tested here is your linguistic skill, not your general knowledge. So if you have no idea about something, it is okay to say that to the examiner. However, usually the questions are about things that you would at least know something about. So you can answer based on what you know. Don't worry about whether the answer is right or wrong. When the examiner asks you something, Try to give full, detailed and relevant answers to get the interview off to a good start. Try to avoid short, unresponsive and uncommunicative replies. For example, if the examiner asks you, where are you from? It, obviously, you could say uh, you are from X. Uh, you could say I'm from X, but that is not a good enough answer for IELTS. You should say I'm from X, which is, say, 35 kilometers from the city Y. Which, um, which is the capital city of my country Z, something like that. So that actually gives more details and shows that you are able to be more communicative. And uh, that helps with the uh, IELTS speaking. Try to avoid short yes no answers to closed questions. These are the questions that start with have you, do you, or is it, something like that. Uh, these can be answered with yes or no. For example, if somebody asks you, have you been to an English speaking country? You can say yes or no, that is an answer, but that's not good enough for IELTS speaking. What you should say rather is uh, something like, for example, mm, I have, uh, yes, I have been to an English speaking country. I have been to England uh, for the summer of 2012. I went with my family to enjoy the Olympic games, for example, something like that. So basically you uh, elaborate the answer as some more details. That is a better answer for IELTS speaking. As you are aware, in part two of IELTS speaking, the examiner gives you a task card and you have to speak about a certain topic, a specific subject given to you uninterrupted for about two minutes. Now you are given one minute before that two minutes starts to prepare for what you're going to say. You have to make sure that you use that minute wisely and make notes of the points that you're going to make. Try to avoid dry, boring, unimaginative introductions such as the object I'm going to describe today is blah, blah, blah. You know, that's too bookish. You should try to get your talk off to a more memorable start. For example, you could say, if I had to pick the single most memorable thing that ever happened to me would have to be something blah, blah, blah. You know, uh, that is uh, that is more of a better start. In part three, as you know, the examiner asks you questions linked to the topic in part two. If you have to buy some time, to collect your thoughts there, you could use expressions like, that's a good question, or, well, let me think, something like that. That, that gives you that fraction of a second to uh, collect your thoughts and give a better answer. If the examiner asks you something that you don't understand, you should take control of the situation and ask something to clarify matters. This is actually uh, an evidence of your communication skills. For example, if the examiner uses a phrase or a word that you don't understand, say something like, um, sorry, but could you explain that? Or I haven't come across that phrase or word before. Uh, do you mean 
blah 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 something so or you could say could you explain what you mean that way um, you don't give a wrong answer but you the way it would happen in any everyday conversation if you don't understand something you ask the other person to clarify themselves so you could do that in IELTS speaking as well if you simply didn't hear what the examiner asked you could say excuse me I didn't quite catch that uh, would you mind repeating yourself or could you say that again if you want to make sure you've understood the examiner correctly you could say do you mean or w when you say da 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 do you mean blah 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 you know so uh, you could ask those things to make sure you understood the examiner correctly so that's all for now i hope that was helpful but there's more to come stay tuned subscribe for more